So, you know, I like, I like my Funkos. And uh, I got this, this sweet Bucky Barnes Funko <laughs> after Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh-huh. But then I also have little fuzzy demons on four legs who like to play Godzilla through my Funkos. <laughs> So they knocked him over and he broke off of his attached face because he's supposed to be like jumping. Mm-hmm. So Dan was able to glue it back together, but we didn't realize until he glued it back together that a piece of the base was missing. So now it looks like it doesn't look like he's jumping so much as like he's falling. <laughs> he got punched in the face. Right. Like somebody <laughs> just punched him in the face and he's like. It's the sp- it's the special Bucky Barnes. Nice. Yeah, it's a limited edition. Just got punched in the face, Bucky Barnes. I can see inside his head. Yeah, I think I'm gonna sell them on eBay for like a billion dollars because it's customized now. And like, I can't find this one again. The only one I can find is him in the red jacket, and I like this one, and I can't nice. find it again. <laughs> so I can't even replace it. All so right. If anybody can find the blue Bucky Barnes, let me know. All right. So a lot of people have been noticing in the YouTube comments that since we moved over to Discord, Tara's been a little audio, a little bit out of sync. Um, I'm trying to fix that. Part of this is I'm moving to, well, the software I've been using up until now has been kind of crap. Um, it, it, the screen capture option on it was terrible. So I'm going to be transferring my stream and stuff over to OBS because um, I'm on Wirecast right now and I have, I'm not paying for this again. It's very expensive. I'm not paying for it again. Um, we are working on it. We are aware of it. Um, tonight, it's a little bit better. I, I've i kind of cobbled together two... I have two streaming software going on right now. I'm using OBS's screen capture in Wirecast. I've kind of cludged the two together just for tonight, because rebuilding the entire stream is going to take a few days. Um, it amazes me how you, like, put this show together with, like, bubble gum and fishing wire and duct tape. What, like it's hard? Like, you're using 20 different kinds. Of, the one time I had to remote one, run the show, I only had to do it for an hour, and that was the most stressful hour of my life. Because I have an iMac. And you're like, well, yeah, usually I have like three monitors, so it's everything's going to be really tiny. And then you got to go into this app and this. App. And I was like, uh, how, how, do, how do, how show? Want make show how? Well, it's gotten a little more, a little more organized since then. And, but the, the Wirecast, I'm, I'm not paying for this anymore because the, the, the screen capture people might have noticed that um you your frame rate was not good we we got because i'm using obs's screen capture tonight you're actually at a full 30 frames per second which you know modern technology i have to figure out a lighting arrangement that doesn't make me look like i died three days ago ring light i have a ring light and i have two very warm lights and I still look like this. And I'm wearing foundation that's actually a shade too dark. You know, you can get like those LEDs and just that th- those full color LED bulbs and just change them until you hit the right color to. Yeah, I might have to do that. Get like a pink one or something. Cause... Yeah. Well, no, you just get like the LED bulb and then you tell it which color you want it to be and you adjust it till it's the right color. Yeah, I have those on my vanity, actually. <laughs> I have a ring of lights around there that I can make them like pastel or whatever. Maybe I need to put those on my computer because (laughs) I look vaguely blue and legit. I am wearing foundation. That's a shade too dark. I am wearing so much bronzer. I have warm yellow lights and a ring light. And I look like a fucking corpse. You know, it's probably why he married me because he's an old goth. So I look dead (laughs) all the time. You can go into the, the. I think there are settings on your webcam that allow you to alter the colors. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. With it later. Nice. With it later. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now that everybody's like dealing with this poor shit, um, it's time for what the fuck is wrong with you. Let's get this. Get the the intro rolling. Each week, Catherine, 
Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little something we like to call What the Fuck Is Wrong With You? And <sighs> there are many times on the show where we have to say the phrase, it happened again. And this is one of those where I hoped we, I, I, I some, it's like, this would never happen again. This is never going to be on the show again. Never, ever. It's not, it's not possible. Well. Oh my God. I want to point out that the dude is going to be okay. Through no fault of his own, he's going to be fine. It's never a good start. Man in China almost dies after inserting live eel into his rectum to cure constipation. Nobody told me the rectal eels were on a reunion tour. <laughs> Many years ago, on this ridiculous show, we, we had... Almost this exact same fucking... St I had to look at the date. I had to look at the fucking date. And lo and behold, it's it's from last week. How would that cure your constipation? Is he... Is the eel... Is, is your... Are you thinking the eel's gonna eat the poop for you? <laughs> That's not how eels work. No, no. I'm pretty sure the cure constipation is in giant air quotes. Right, but why would you even think that's a believable story? <laughs> like, when they're like, well, how, how, how would that work, sir? How would the eel cure? Oh, well, you know, he was going to eat it. The man was encouraged to and try the then, treatment. And then the egg would be sticking out of my butt, and he would poop. So he would, like, filter the poop for me, and then I would poop him, and then I'd be fine. The man was encouraged to try the treatment from folklore... That said, eel could help in bowel movement. Probably eating it. <laughs> they, they probably mean that you should, like, eat it. <laughs> Wrong end, cowboy. <laughs> um, instead of curing his constipation, the fish went from his rectum to the colon before biting through and entered his abdomen. No. Doctors who operate him said he could have lost his life. This bacteria in the large intestines. Uh, reached, yeah, yes, Grady, I know, it's terrible. It's called sepsis, and it's not fun. Now, this is, this is kind of amazing, because, interestingly, the eel was still alive. It was removed during the operation, so... The eel's going to... Look, it's not the eel's fault. The eel was had wanted no part of this bullshit. No. I'm pretty sure when the eel woke up that morning, he had no intention of going up a human's butthole. No. That was not on his to-do list. Probably a lot Eel's of... He's got a book deal now, though. <laughs> hey, if J.D. Vance can get a Netflix deal, this fucking eel can. <laughs> <laughs> Because you get it. Uh, it's poor eel. Don't don't do this. No living thing really wants to be in your butt, and there are living things in your butt, but they're single cell organisms. Yeah. Maybe there's a couple of parasites, but they're they're, they're and you know what they don't have teeth. Yeah, they, they don't have the teeth. Nothing with teeth belongs up your ass sharp teeth especially you wouldn't think you'd have to tell people that <sighs> but here we are that that is some determined oh, do you know how the determination uh -oh. simba has something to say hi simba hi buddy you have your own keyboard no no it's like, no keyboard. but no no your keyboard <laughs> You gave keyboard. you gave the cat his own keyboard. It works. Yes. It fucking works. Dan, Dan read a study that because he's a psychologist and a big nerd that the reason cats walk on your keyboard is they want to be involved in what you're doing, like it's the cat's way of trying to help. So he had an old keyboard and he gave it to Simba, and it kind of worked. <laughs> 
So if your cat's always on your keyboard and you have an extra keyboard, just give the cat a keyboard. I had to order a new one, so I just cut the cable off and put it up here. Simba's working on his PhD on in psychology. No, dude. <laughs> Apparently we're going to make me a liar. No, here, keyboard. Dude. Keyboard. Dude. Dude. Over your keyboard. Over here. Thank you. Or Good. show everybody your butthole. Yeah. That works too. Good boy, Simba. <laughs> uh, all right, let's let's get to less. All right. Well, this is I, I keep using the joke. The the whole come down from there. No, you're gonna yell at me. It's a classic. Which is dude up in actually in a treehouse. Well, guess what? It's it fucking Man barricades himself in tree hall in treehouse after assault. Arson. Armstrong County. It's from Pennsylvania. Can you barricade? I mean, <laughs> what kind of treehouse is really bare? <laughs> I guess there was that treehouse master show. I guess those are. Oh my God, you never watched. Weirdly, it was on Animal Planet. This guy that builds like luxury treehouses. I don't know. I guess you could barricade one of those, but like. Kitten Nanning Man is facing charges after police say he barricaded himself in a treehouse after assaulting an elderly man and setting fire to a home. Joseph Alton Hawk, 20, of Kitten Nanning, was charged with arson and assault related charges after an incident. Uh, state police responded to a call where it was reported Hawk assaulted an 82 year old man. Eh. Police were responding. Do it was also learned that Hawk allegedly set fire to the home and ran off. Multiple police agencies, including state police, local departments, canine officers, and helicopters searched the area but could not find him. Police again responded to the home after reports Hawk was seen there. When they arrived, they found Hawk barricaded by himself in a treehouse. Now, you'd think if you were attempting to get away from the police, you would not put your... Can you fly? Because if you can't fly, <laughs> there are limited exits from a treehouse. You, you want a good exit strategy. For yeah. Sure. Normally, with one that doesn't hopefully involve falling. That's not a good yeah. one. Maybe he was hoping it was kind of like the, the little... Woods house in in uh, Stranger Things that he could go to the upside down. Mm, no. it just my God, look, you had a full day, my friend. Yeah. Assaulting the elderly, setting their homes on fire, and then evading the police. But to top it off, tree just the tree house is a little cherry on fucking top. No, I'm not coming out. I'm in the middle of making s'mores. There's some kid somewhere who's like, I want to play in there, but there's an asshole up yeah. there. Their fucking treehouse is now a crime scene. <laughs> <There's, laughs> I just pictured the yellow tape around the treehouse and the kid just sitting down there staring. <laughs> I want to go to my treehouse. My favorite truck is up there. I can just see detectives bent over in the trench coats. Hunched out the little the tree house. <laughs> Taking fucking oh, breaks son. and shit. Your tongue has been impounded. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, all right. It's no fun being a kid anymore. One of the, 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 the critical elements of getting away with a crime, and I, 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 I'm pretty sure this is universal, is... No one should know it was you that committed the crime. That's 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 that pretty is much crucial to getting away with it. So, with that in mind, it's probably not a good idea to rob your own bank. Breckenridge Ridge robber deposits fifty dollars, then steals a hundred thousand from his own credit union. 
Brackenridge man. Oh, not like one he owned, just no. the one he's a customer. He's a customer. Brackenridge man deposited fifty dollars at his credit union, then later re then returned later in the day to make a major withdrawal of a hundred and one thousand dollars. The same day. The withdrawal, however, was a holdup. Wednesday, Thomas George, sixty six. Man, I hope I have that kind of that, that motivation when I'm sixty six. I hope you're keeping active. <laughs> Out in my community, staying active. Pled guilty in federal court to armed bank robbery. George allegedly uh, entered Allegheny Ludlam Federal Credit Union on July 10th, wearing a Guy Fawkes mask and pointed what appeared to be a gun at two tellers. He demanded they open the gate, leading the area behind the counter. George then ordered one of the tellers who was using a walker God, to open the vault. A witness saw him leave and run to a vehicle. Surveillance footage and license plate readers showed it to be a Ford Escape registered to George. Credit union employees say George was a longtime customer and had been there that morning driving the same vehicle. Dude. Come on now. You didn't even you didn't even park around the block. Like bare minimum effort. Did you at least do a Batman voice or something? Can we come on? Bad. Did you at least? I mean, you, the guy Fox. All right, you at least put on a mask, but I'm probably sure you were wearing the same clothes. Tom, is that you? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I get you know. Who's, who's Tom? This is a very guy thing. Not not to be you know stereotypical, but I I am this this kind of dude. It's not all dudes. But this kind of dude, I am this kind of dude that when I put on a, an outfit for a day, that's my outfit for the day. If I'm changing clothes, it's because I'm going to bed. That, you don't uh, have like outside clothes and inside clothes? No. Because if we go out, like the first thing both of us does when we come home is change into our home clothes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah. Like, I don't wear jeans in the house. But I... If I if I'm wearing one I'm wearing one thing for the day. That's what I do. Okay. A lot. I, I know it's. I I know. I know. But I'm pretty sure this is. A, he's the same kind of. Especially at 66, you're like I'm. Just, I'm not changing my fucking clothes today. So he probably came back in the exact same clothes he was wearing earlier in the day. But with a mask on. With a mask on. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, Tom, you're back. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. What? <laughs> no. Give me your money. <laughs> Who's Tom? It's like, this is where, where, it's like, Tom, where'd you get that mask? Uh. All right. Next up, we are going to British Columbia. Now, it's especially notable that they've had catastrophic heat. In the in the northwest, um, been really bad here. So you would think that after that a massive heat wave and 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 all the problems, they would be very conscious of things like fire. You would be wrong. Despite burn bans, British Columbia man tells Mounties he didn't want to mow his lawn. Set it on fire instead. That's not a good solution when there's not a fire problem. No. British Columbia man who didn't feel like cutting his grass has been fined more than $1,000 for the fire he started. Mounties on the Sunshine Coast said they and firefighters were called to a home, the Port Mellon Highway, for a report of heavy smoke on Tuesday. Fire was called in by passengers on passing British Columbia ferry vessels who could see the fire from the water. Uh, according to the Mounties, the fire was about 10 feet in diameter, which that's pretty big. 10 foot circle, pretty big. If you want to know what the actual circumference and volume is, well, that's what pi is for. Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Had to be extinguished by firefighters. As, a, as for the cause of the, the grass fire... In this case, it was undoubtedly human. Mounty said the homeowner told them that instead of cutting the tall grass, he just decided to burn it. 
The province is currently under several burn bans due to the risk of wildfires when in what has been an unusually hot and dry summer. Wouldn't that kill your grass? Yeah. Like, do you never want to mow your lawn again? Well, not for the season anyway. I mean, you, you burn your grass down, it'll come back in about a year or so. Gra grass is he's kind of resilient. It will come back. Also, you know that fire doesn't stay where you tell it. Yeah. Like, it's, you don't get to tell fire, sit, stay. Fire is is rarely, if ever, employee of the month because it does not take directions well. No. It's like, you know, you know, you know, that episode of Loki with the giant monster that ate everything, the big old, I guess it was basically the Langoliers, but scarier. Goliath. That's fire. I, I, I know. Yeah. I actually know the fuck. Fire oh will just God. eat everything. Yeah. Fire, fire. Yeah. It doesn't give a shit. Including fire. your house and you. What the fuck? Mother Come on, man. Come on. Look, I have I have to deal with a lawn these days and it's not fun. Lawns suck. I I they they're just terrible cuz they, they In winter it's fine. It's just there. It doesn't do anything. We no longer have a lawn and we don't really miss it. Mm. Partially cuz we just have a little we're in a development with pretty small properties, but also lawns kind of aren't really fashionable here because it's so dry and we have fire season yeah and i, I don't really miss it you don't I, have to mow astroturf i look out my window sometimes and i look at it and i'm like i should just burn this all down but i don't because <laughs> fire is not exactly good for no. and you would probably go to prison yeah and as we've covered I can't run this shit without. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the main concern there. That that There'd that be no show because you'd be in prison. I mean, even when Dan is going, that's too much fire. You gotta, you know, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> when this fucking psycho is like, no, you can't have fire like that. <laughs> Build your own homemade flamethrower. That's for people. <laughs> <laughs> He's an environmentally conscious pyro. <laughs> I've um, lately had to keep reminding him that if he goes to prison, it's going to interfere with his chemo. <laughs> and that's how I'm keeping him on the straight and narrow now. <sighs> <sighs> All right. Next up. Let's we have had this is another this keeps happening but this guy i have no respect for we have had this happen many times now at least at least five if not more and we have seen put people put in real effort not great effort but real effort into this particular shenanigan um can you use shenanigan as a singular sure okay but this dude, I have I have no respect because holy shit, this is some sloppy shit. Holyoke traffic stop for fake plate leads to discovery of illegal firearm. And let me show you the fake license plate here. I I have no respect for that. None. We have seen people break out the arts and crafts on these before. We have seen people like make really elaborate yeah. even if it wasn't really good at a distance it kind of looked like this is just like this license plate it it do thing it's also expired <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it was already yeah unless this story is really old no i don't know why you would make your fake license plate expired <laughs> it's fake you it, it doesn't have to expire ever <laughs> Yeah, this the story was 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 on the twenty seventh. So it, it that that is an incredibly good point. You not only did you make a fake license plate, it came pre expired. You're you're the god of that <laughs> license plate. You're the god of the imaginary DMV in your head. Shoot for the stars. 
Make it expire in 2045. <laughs> Why? <laughs> police detectives assisted by a member of the Massachusetts State Police discovered an illegal firearm after stopping a car for a handwritten plate Monday. According to the news release, uh, John Collins, 42, of Jacopi, was stopped by was stopped on Sergeant Street. Chicopee. Chicopee? Chicopee Mass. Chicopee Mass, all right. Was allegedly arrested for operating a car without a license. After searching the vehicle during the arrest, police report they found a 25 caliber fi uh, 25 caliber firearm. Things to not do when you don't have a license, a reg or registration, or insurance, is don't pile a felony on top of that. Because all of that other stuff, those those are those are traffic violations. Essentially, you will I be. I did those first three. I got pulled over for 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 the hat trick. Yeah. You know what I didn't have? An illegal gun. Yeah, you'll be fine for for those. If 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 no license, they might take you. Know, you know, they'll give you a fine for no license, a fine for no registration, a fine for no insurance. That it'll suck. They won't let you drive home. Yeah, it'll the suck. The will sit there and wait for you to find a ride because you can't drive home. But when you have the illegal gun, that's that's the bonus round. Yeah. You've that's the daily double. You've hit the felony time. And it's Massachusetts, which like New England and New York are not lax with their gun laws. Also, imagine you're busted for an illegal gun and it's a 25 caliber. <laughs> you've you committed a felony. Been a cool gun. You've you've committed a felony for essentially is, is like a varmint pistol. Is that one of the ones that only holds like two bullets? Well, it's a tiny, teeny, tiny or bullet. Is that a twenty-two? Well, yeah. it's 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 a teeny, tiny bullet. Twenty-five caliber. It's like do do do. It's it's not good. You're you're you're, you're just yes. If you shoot a big enough person, you're just going to annoy them. Not really worth the effort. No. And and now now you're going to jail. For that, the license plate is killing me. I mean, you might learn how to make real license plates <laughs> in jail. <laughs> so you're getting better at your craft. I guess is the silver lining. Uh, I I th no work ethic, no work ethic anymore. No, it's the craftsmanship that I miss. Yeah. And finally this week, um, there's a meme that goes around every once in a while uh, on, on the Twitters. Uh, have you seen it? It's, now that's what I call praxis. Um, no. <laughs> well, I think that that pretty much sums up. Like in the Vampire the Masquerade way? No, in, in the political way. In the socialist, communist, proletariat rising, yeah, that kind of way. Not, not I knew that. Family. I just was wondering if you knew that. <laughs> <laughs> smooth. It's real smooth. That's that good. was a pop quiz. You passed. Yeah. Um. Th this is. I'm almost not. I'm almost kind of rooting for the dude in this one. Excavator driver. Builder causes 425,000 uh, pounds in damage to new flats after not being paid. And there was a video, but it got taken down. Here's some stills from what happened. A uh, building contractor tore down the balconies of a new apartment block out of frustration after he allegedly did not get paid. Um... The development in the German city of Bloomberg in the Black Forest being demolished by an excavation machine. Uh, the man is said to have obtained the excavator specifically for his destruction campaign, only stopped because the hydraulic hose broke. So <laughs> the dude went out, rented an ex. This he did this legally. He's like, yes, sir. I would like to rent your finest excavator, please. 
which wasn't because the host broke, but he rented an excavator just to come back and be like, motherfucker, you did pay me. After the destruction, the man got in his car and drove away. <laughs> I mean, don't, don't fuck with people who know how to wreck your shit. Oh, now we have Dottie jumping around? Chaos in here. Like, it's... Oh, and Val hi, Valkyrie. I got oh. a little Valkyrie under my chair. Every freelancer oh, watching oh, this... Every freelancer watching this, every artist watching this, every web designer watching, everyone who ever worked for themselves and has got to pay, send an invoice is looking at this and going, no, there's an idea. Yeah. And I've heard of that. Like, oh, you don't pay me? We take down your website. <laughs> this is. That's kind of the same thing. Ki kind of. Yeah. Normally, I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? What are you, do, you pay people, man. Don't fuck with the people that can get an excavator real easy. <laughs> he knows people. What's he going to do? Even ask questions. It's his job. What's he going to do? Take the building apart? Oh. Oh. Uh oh, oh, he did? <laughs> oh. I mean, I will admit to now, 30 odd years later, of throwing a full 32 ounce Pepsi inside of the boss's son's new challenger. Wow. Yeah, I think the statue. That's a nice car. I think the statue of limitations on that would expire. You're pretty they, safe. You're probably on, safe. They had, us on a, they had us on a wage freeze. We couldn't, they couldn't afford to give us any, any raises or anything. And the boss's son pulled up in a brand new challenger. And on my lunch break, it had an accident. <laughs> Man, I would have I would have gone for the tires, but that's just me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm I'm like I, I can't I'm I'm trying to be find fault here, but I'm just like yeah, this is what happens. Yeah, good for him. This is what happens, Larry. This is what happens. This is what happens when you feel a stranger <laughs> in the Alps. Like yeah, you know, the first thing we learned this week is. If the motherfuckers have access to heavy equipment and know how to use it, don't piss them off. Pretty much anybody who's doing something you can't afford, you don't know how to do yourself, and they could undo it really easily, just fucking pay them. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure he, you didn't know him half a million, but uh, yeah. that would have been much less expensive. You fucker had it coming um we we've learned that maybe you should like that fake license plate that's like waving a red flag i know it's a misno i i know it's it's an old wives tale or whatever you want to call it but waving a red flag in front of a bull but still you're kind of like drawing real attention to yourself and you're riding around you're riding dirty you're actually riding dirty you might as well just Instead of the license plate number, just write, please pull me over. Right? Um, we've learned that fire is bad at directions. Not a great landscaper either. Not not a great landscaper. You should probably hire a professional. Fire is not a professional. No. It will get the job done, but it likes the overtime. It likes to rack up the overtime. Um, we've learned maybe... Don't rob the places that you patronize, especially if you're a fucking regular. Maybe, maybe not the same day in your own car also. Right. Um, we've learned tree houses are not good escape options. Not terribly for, defensible. Not good. Only for, one point of egress. I mean, if you're trying to elude zombies. Treehouse is pretty good, but not even because like, how long can you stay up there? That's a point. That is a point. Because the zombies can wait. Yeah. Like how much food you got in that treehouse? And finally, pee in. and finally, I guess you could pee on the zombies. They won't care. We've learned no member of the animal kingdom wants to be involved in your butthole. Nope. 
maybe dogs, but only to sniff it. <laughs> they don't want to go up there. No, no one wants to go up there. No. Nobody does. It's, it's Even that little girl that wonders what's inside your butthole, she doesn't want to visit. <laughs> she just wants you to tell her what's inside your butthole. She doesn't want to see it. I wonder what's inside your butthole. Well, there's something with teeth. 